Hi, Mickey. Hey, Bob. What you got there? Look, it's a sign. Trumpism deniers equal victory. Now, yeah. is that a hyphen between Trumpism it's a and minus? De- it's a minus sign. Trumpism Bob. minus deniers equals victory. Okay. Uh, well, victory for who? Victory for Trumpism or for Trump? Correct. No, uh, Trumpism. Well, it could okay. be Trump too, but uh, I, I, I mean, Trump has some other problems. But the, the, my latest line is on uh, the election is. It's all going according to plan, Bob. Congratulations, uh, then. Uh, Republicans got enough power, barely, to block Biden's agenda once they get it, uh, once they once the new Congress comes in, and they and and miraculously the deniers were really pretty soundly defeated, and the people that were were the you know the John Meacham uh, won the election. Mm-hmm. He managed to. He and 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 that and the Save Democracy uh, uh, pitch managed to sway enough independence, and they hate the people who, were, who they thought and they did pose a threat to democracy. So they they're not going to do that anymore. Blake Masters conceded. Everybody's conceding. We got JD uh, Vance, an election denier, as you know, whom you support. But I digress. You do have I, one. I have, was going to look up. I, I I still think it's a very flimsy charge that he's an election denier, and I notice. That all the reports that said all the de- election deniers lost, by definition, then he's not an election denier because he won. No, but I think they were talking about people in swing states who would have held actual power over elections, governors and secretaries of state. That was the standard report. Well, now they, by the they, way, they speaking of which, in some way that excluded Vance. Maybe. Speaking of which, one of the deniers is in denial. Carrie Lake, one of the deniers who lost, is now denying her election outcome, right? Uh, well, she hasn't conceded. It was very close. It was 17,000 votes or so, uh, and there were some problems, so she's going to flail around for a bit, is, I think. Is that uh, above the recount threshold in Arizona? No, no. She didn't, no make, automatic the recount. Recount. She didn't make the recount. She didn't make the recount threshold. Sorry to hear um, that. Uh, I'm, not un- I'm not completely unhappy that she lost. I think minus the denialism again... So wait, you're not completely Minus unhappy. Minus denialism, she would be a she would be a uh, probably a, a quite a good governor. But uh, you know, that's like saying you know, aside from the, that, Mister Mrs. Lincoln. Well, I was going to um, ask you. Yeah, I mean, don't you th- just theoretically? I mean, now you're saying you think you had it, you got it both ways. The deniers are gone, and I gather you're saying the child tax credit will not pass. That's what you mean, I'm, right? I'm not unhappy that Meacham is a Let's put it that way. I'm not unhappy that people took these these. The my hope was that uh, all the all the uh, election denial bullshit would just sort of be be overwhelmed by concern over crime and immigration and other things and wokeism, and and gradually the uh, the the Trump denial bullshit would just sort of fade away. That's and the voters decided no, we hate this shit. We're going to get rid of it now. That's it. Doesn't upset me that they got rid of it. Now. Upset, let me let me wait. Look, can I drill down on that? Do you mean you were kind of indifferent? Like it'd be okay with you if all these election deniers held power in these swing states? For the, this is just not an issue to you. You're just not concerned about the no, future I just, of the republic. It wasn't the paramount issue. I didn't. I didn't. I. 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 I you know the extreme ones like Fincham. I'm. I would have voted against him. So it, yes, it would. I would upset me that he won. Uh, but, uh, but it sounds like Carrie Lake. You'd have people, to be fine. The with people. He, the people that just gave lip service to Trump because they had to do that for his endorsement doesn't bother me. Carrie Lake would have would have bothered me, I think, because I don't know who I, how I would have voted in that race because, you know, Arizona's well, a state. It doesn't state bother and, you very much. Let me ask you this. So, so what, what doesn't saying, bother me? Okay. okay. Uh, I mean, she doesn't bother you very much if you can't tell us how you would have voted, obviously. But but let me... Um, let me drill down. So, so the bottom line of what you're saying about the the new Congress is, child tax credit won't pass. That's what you mean, right? Well, I don't. Th- well, the, I, I, there, there. As you know, there, there, there are two issues I worry about. The child tax credit. There's going to be a big push for it in the lame duck. There already is. This is before the Republicans take control of Congress. Mm-hmm. Pelosi will pass it. Uh, then uh, it goes to the Senate. And the question is, do they get 60 votes in the Senate? 
complicated by the fact that it's going to be attached to some must pass piece of legislation. Mm -hmm. So the question is, does it get compromised down into, into mm -hmm. acceptableness or not? And does it get 60 votes? Most people think it won't get 60 votes. Uh, but there are people like Romney who have been for it in the past and uh, a couple of other people rounds, I think. Okay. So we've sure, got a couple of Republicans anyway. The, you sure um, it won't pass in the new Congress if it fails to pass in the existing Congress? I'm much more confident that it won't pass in the okay. new Congress. Okay, so you're happy. That McCarthy will block it. You're happy. Uh, Here's my I was told the I was told the 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 DEFCON the the danger level now is six out of ten. After McCarthy takes over, it's three out of ten. So here's my so hypothetical. Here's my hypothetical. If you is, had to choose, if there were only two choices given the way the election goes, either a a red wave that precludes child tax credit but involves all these election deniers winning in all these swing states, or it was going to be the other extreme where the Republicans did so badly that child tax credit was going to pass and you had none of the election deniers, which would you choose? Oh, I think I would choose the former because, uh, uh, that's, uh, because the course, I think, could be, and the press could, oh, could rein in most of the problem. Oh, man. I worry about and the, you. Uh, and the and the tax credit is a creates an underclass that's going to be with us for generations. Um. Okay. So, what else about the? Is there anything else about the election? Um. I don't uh, think the Supreme Court is going to go denier. I agree. There was a danger, but there's a danger. You know, the there's a danger that they'll like fuck up the count so much at the local hey, level look. that. The shit you can know. fall apart before it gets to the Supreme Court. You're just playing with fire. It's, you're just totally playing with fire. I just, but anyway, let's, let's, so what about, so how did Trump's rollout go? Uh, everybody thinks it was boring and John Harris uh, writes that it's, uh, it's, uh, he, he wasn't, his heart wasn't in and he's not enjoying it anymore, which indicates he might not go the distance or he might get a new heart. Who knows? But, uh, uh, so it, he didn't mention the denier stuff, implying that at least temporarily he's managed to be talked out of uh, his obsession. Uh, and uh, so, you know, it, 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 he refrained from attacking DeSantis. So it went okay for as far as he goes, but it didn't excite anybody. I still think he's very vulnerable. And I think ultimately, uh, you know, DeSantis can beat him. Uh, the, you know, the there's a school of thumb that a school of thought that he should, uh, you know, get it over with early, have the have the Trump fight now uh, so that people will forget about it by election. But we can't, it seems you to, can't. I don't see how he does that. I mean, you can't kill Trump until the primaries start. Right. I mean, unless, right, unless but he, you can you can you can wage a campaign against him and the polls show that DeSantis is at 70 and he's at 20. And he suddenly figures there's something else for him to, him to do. Do you think that would happen, though? Do you think the polls would show that? I think DeSantis would be ahead of the polls, yeah. Yeah, but it, but it needs to be something like 60, 60, you know, it needs to be dramatic for Trump to drop out, don't you think? The difference on the polls between DeSantis and Trump. Yeah, it might be dramatic. So, I mean, DeSantis can't count on it's that. It's humiliating. Well, it'll be interesting it to see. It can't count on it, but, it, you know, the. I mean, the, it, go ahead. It'll be interesting to see what strategy DeSantis adopts. Does he, uh, you know, do what you're saying, confront him early? Now, did, is, has Trump persisted in the DeSantis trashing? How many times has he said, Ron, de sanctimonious? Twice. See, that's, so he he's even kind of backing off, it sounds like. He, he didn't, he didn't, well, he, yeah. He, he backed off it in the announcement speech. So he managed to be mature, semi-mature for a day. Uh, and the you know the Republicans were furious at him for trashing DeSantis, and uh, so we'll see if it that lasts a week. Uh, you wouldn't want to bet on it. And it, by the way, is that he is that a good dig? Is 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 DeSantis? I guess he's kind of sanctimonious. Does that seem to you like it cuts the, to the um, very heart of DeSantis? I defer. I defer to Nellie Bowles, who wrote Trump. I'm I'm afraid to admit Trump still got it. Huh? She thought it 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 hit home. Uh, I guess. I mean, he almost seems 
too thuggish to qualify as sanctimonious. You know what I mean? Yeah, he, yeah, that's true. He, the question, he doesn't, he, he, there's this phrase, you know, does he get the joke? Does he realize, you know, that uh, he's all, in some sense, an abs- everybody is an absurd figure and filled with frailty? And does he mock himself? Trump does do that sometimes. Uh, but I don't think DeSantis does. There's no sign of that. That's the first step to sanctimoniousness. I agree. He's not, he's not Meacham level sanctimonious yet, but <laughs> you know, that uh, that's. No, I, 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 people who know him better, you know, have followed him more closely than I say he, there are no signs of any kind of sense of humor at all, let alone ironic self-awareness. Huh. I didn't hear that. I, I, I've heard, you know, I've heard various things that, uh, well, I, I haven't gotten the full down. A friend of mine at a, at a party, a reporter friend of mine who knows Florida politics, gave me the download on DeSantis and I mm-hmm. forgot what it was. But it was something, he, he he's in some weird Christian group, maybe he could be attacked for. His wife wears the pants in the family. She's doesn't wear the pants, but his wife is a formidable Eva Peron-like figure, maybe. Uh so Trump and should question his manhood. Play, he played baseball in college. This may be hard. Hard to question his manhood. Um, but uh, it um, and that you know he'll stop at nothing. He's ruthless, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, Trump hates uh, that in the main. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I, you know, these are these are from people who want to hate DeSantis. But yeah. I'm gonna get the full down on later. So meanwhile, on the Democratic side, uh, I mean, not to sound. Machiavellian or cynical, but one octogenarian down, one to go. Is that too harsh? I mean, you know, in terms of just setting the stage for a for a vibrant Democratic Party, uh, Nancy. Well, Blo- and was, look, and seri- but seriously, you know, she's an historic figure. She first was, she first was female very, speaker. She's she's a masterful politician. She's still got game. You know, she was she was very masterful within her own sphere. What she did. You know, Obamacare would not have passed without her after that election in Massachusetts. She managed to pull it out of the fire. Mm -hmm. Uh, That was really impressive. Uh, It it was, you know, in foreign policy, she seems to be be a little out of her water. Uh, But clearly she should not have stepped down. She, you know, there's a tiny Republican majority. She could just make the Republicans' life a living hell. She's so skilled. And and why 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 now of all time she should have stuck around for two more years, uh, you know, d- screw the Republicans. If you were a Democrat, screw the Republicans for two years and then quit. Uh, well, I, I, I you know, there's neither sometimes us, when you, when you pass the baton to a new guy, it doesn't work out. Neither of us knows what it feels like to be 82. But if I extrapolate, like draw a line from 40 to where I am now, and keep drawing the line until 82, yeah, I think I'd be I think I'd be hanging them up. It's just kind of spend my time watching football and getting massages and stuff. Um, um, I don't think so, but um, not not. Get, get I'm back. Cl- to I'm me closer to I'm 82. closer to Pelosi than you are, and uh, and you're still feeling it. You're still on top. I'm of still game. feeling it. Yeah. No, with um, the with, with the right medicines. Meanwhile, you know, I wanted to add one thing. When I was saying Tim Ryan would be the logical guy to break the ice as far as challenging Biden, I don't know if I remember to say the main thing, which is just the main thing is. I, and I don't think he would win or any, he would get the nomination. But the main thing is he's the most likely to do it. He's got nothing to lose. He, he's not anywhere in politics right now. And yet he would get some attention. Uh, and uh, so he's he's the guy. And I encourage him. Uh, but he but is a quick, loser. Well, no, he won a lot of congressional races. Right. But most recently he lost to a guy who the media stupidly derided. Uh, and is now a U.S. senator. Another. Reason we have another the election the denying uh, U.S. senator. Congrat- congratulations um, on that. Now you're just absolutely crazy to like piss on J.D. Vance. He's a he's a perfectly reasonable person. Uh, I don't recall pissing on J.D. Vance, but you never know. Possibly one of those. I think you just crazy did. Friday nights that you just don't remember. Um. Uh. The so, um. Let's talk. It, it, so yeah. the, Hoyer is the guy that got screwed in all this. He's mm-hmm. been waiting around for speaker. He's older than Pelosi. <laughs> and, and everybody seems to love him. Apparently he's a nice, uh, courteous person. Uh, but 
you know, he, they, they, and he had the, they, they had, he, he, he had the, uh, I give him points for when they asked him how it feels to be out of power. He said, it feels really bad. <laughs> That's like when they asked Elliot Spitzer how it felt to be a slave colonist. Said, it feels awful. I used to be governor of New York. <laughs> Whatever happened to Elliot Spitzer? I keep um, waiting for the comeback. Uh, I think he may be a long way. Cuomo's going to come back, but Spitzer doesn't seem to come back. So is that that's pretty much it for politics, I guess, huh? I mean, I, I'm uh, happy just because, you know, judges, you know, uh judges will be in demo judge appointments will be in democratic hands. Now the the hearings, we will see, I assume. I mean, tell me this. Like the margin is gonna be pretty thin in, in the house, right? What correct. It's about what, the same as Pelosi's margin was. Does that mean there's anything that Republicans would want to do that they won't be able to do? that McCarthy would want to do that he won't be able to do because he can't get the hardcore well, Trumpists on board or something? Well, first, don't assume that it's going to be McCarthy. He doesn't seem to have the votes. Oh, okay. He just lost three of them. So if it's 221, that puts him one, one a vote away from not having enough votes. Mm -hmm. So it, it, a lot depends on who the substitute McCarthy is. It okay. could be a, a horrible sellout who... Uh, doesn't mind losing a lot of but like lot we of will see hearings things. in any event that are designed to embarrass the Biden administration. Yeah, but right? the hearings are not the hearings are a sideshow designed to stoke up. The I don't base. know. I mean, it's the new CNN may run them or may give them real coverage, yeah. whereas the old CNN wouldn't have. But I'm in favor of Mallorca's hearings just because there's a whole bunch of embarrassing information that might come out. Uh, and uh, will that know, be so one subject of hearings? Hearings about Mallorca? It already is. It's already slated. Yeah. Yeah, and then the, there, the, will the, there be hearings about Hunter? There will definitely be hearings about Hunter. And that's worth doing, too, because, you know, Biden has a, has a sore spot with Hunter. So you may poke the sore spot and he may, he may do something rash. But mm -hmm. it's not important for the nation compared with stopping amnesty, stopping the tax credit, uh, doing, you know, doing the things to rein in the budget. I mean, the, you know, the I never understood the inflation issue. What? Why was the, you know people were concerned about inflation, but why was that going to redound to the Republicans' benefit? Turned out it didn't redound to the Republicans' benefit because they didn't present a clear plan for fighting it. Maybe they had a clear plan involving spending less and uh, ginning up energy supplies. Uh, uh, you know that they should have promoted that. They didn't promote it. They just said, "Well, people are pissed off, so they'll vote vote against Biden." No, they didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, you know, reining in the budget. Uh, would be uh, wildly important for slowing down inflation. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, it, 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 I don't know enough about Congress. And, you know, they're, Reagan managed to get a lot done without having the House. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I don't know quite how he got things to the floor. My impression is that the... Speaker of the House has a lot of power not to bring bills to the floor. So unless it's really unpopular, McCarthy or whoever the speaker is can bottle up anything. Mm -hmm. So uh, quick Ukraine update. Uh, we're, we're well more sure, than one that. more. Yeah. One more thing about there will be also be a lame duck push for a big amnesty. So there are two two big two lame things duck that are keeping points. Mickey up at night. Correct. Okay. okay, go ahead with Ukraine. Sorry. Um, so, of course, this uh, missile landed in Poland and killed two people, and uh, people kind of various people jumped to the conclusion that it was Russian and 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 uh, and demanded action. Uh, needless to say, um, well, Michael McFaul wasn't as bad as he might have been. He did say, you know, refer to Putin's massive terrorist attacks against Ukrainian and Polish civilians without pausing to find out whether the uh, attack had actually come from Russia. Of course, it turned out not to, apparently, both the U.S. and the Polish Well, there's government some debate. Did. I mean, if you were Biden, and uh, you would want to have an investigation and decide it wasn't a Russian missile, even if it was a Russian missile, right? Why, um, why let this provocation provoke you? You know, it would be And there's convenient. some suspicion that that's what happened. Eh, in what circles? I mean, they're being fairly firm in their claims about where the evidence points. Um, 
I, I, I don't, I don't think, you know, I don't think they're, they're lying about it. Um, but, you know, I mean, God knows Zelensky jumped in right away and more or less explicitly said NATO should join the war. And I'm not sure he has backed off in his claim that it was a Russian missile. Um, and, Why and does I, he think that will help him? W- w- I would think NATO will help him? Yes. Because it would. So I NATO, mean, with the, 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 the war is going to stay bet- in between uh, in, in Ukraine's borders? If NATO has war with Russia, it's going to stay in Ukraine? No, it's going to be a world war. There's going to be fighting all over the place. Ukraine may be obliterated and nobody will pay any attention to it. No, but right. Well, first of all, I, I mean, Russia would have to diffuse its firepower. Ukraine would be a less focused target. I mean, look, Ukraine would suddenly have a bunch of allies. Russia would suddenly have none. It's like it definitely improves the odds. I mean, of course, you and I think World War Three nuclear war. But if you're Ukraine and you're and you're getting, you know, and you're under assault like this, you, it's not why, hard to convince yourself why wouldn't that those China problems be on Russia's won't side? materialize. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't China be on Russia's side? You said Russia would have no allies. China obviously doesn't want Russia to use nukes. Uh, she is inching away from Russia, uh, but mm-hmm. that would bring him right back if NATO declared, jumped in. Well, he's not with them now. They're not arming Russia. China is not arming Russia. Right, but if NATO declared war you on Russia, maybe China they would. China might start arming yeah. Russia? I'm not sure. I think if it was, if it were clear cut, like uh, a clear cut provocation, like especially if Russia intentionally attacked NATO, I'm not sure China would. China is not happy with Russia. I mean, the reports you hear uh, about the extent to which China was clued in from the beginning by Putin range from he he didn't tell them at all he's going to invade. I doubt that. Too, he didn't tell them he was going for Kiev. You know, China's not happy with Russia. If if the thing had gone swimmingly, they'd be fine. It's done, but it hasn't, and it's embarrassing. And but, uh, but I'm saying, what if NATO used this Gulf of Tonkin uh, missile strike to enter the war? China might not be happy at all. I don't know. I think they're happy to see NATO ex- expend firepower in places other than China. I, I don't. I mean, they would not like the risk of nuclear war. They, they, they probably wouldn't like. The, they, they don't love instability generally. But, but I don't know. I mean, look, I, I don't know why they would want to make it an even wider war by joining in. Jesus, I mean, they might get attacked on there in the Pacific. I don't. Well, you I, just just said, said, I don't see it. You just said. You said Russia had no allies, and I was suggesting they would have an ally and a very big one. Not yeah, I know, and not I don't that think China so. would declare war on us, but they might start supplying them with arms. And well, in any event, look, you know, if you're Ukraine, that's not the way you're thinking. What you're thinking, if you're Ukraine, is if they're being honest with themselves, Russia just did this mobilization. There is no way we're getting all our territory back, even as a military matter. Set aside the wisdom of trying to get it back, unless. We have more support from NATO. And, and also, you know, it could be a bargaining thing. Like you demand that NATO actually enter it, and they, don't, they say, well, we won't do that, but here's 50 tanks. They yeah, well, that makes more tanks. sense. But right. They, but, 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 but they, would, they would be happy for NATO to join this. Yeah. What you just said is very similar to what Millie said. Uh, Millie's tr- Millie is sort of, uh, are you talking to Millie? Millie is sort of channeling... Am I talking uh, to you're, Millie? You're, 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 Millie is sort of channeling the B- Bob Wright side of the argument here. And he, and he said, look, there's no way that the Ukrainians are going to get rid of the Russians entirely from the country on their own. I didn't quite understand that because he, sa- he said they could kick them out of the cities, but there's all this territory. And my impression was once you kick them out of the cities, the territory is all flat and it you can roll that up pretty quickly. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. No, I but, think I think it's more the other way around. Almost it, it, when it, when territory's flat and open, it works against the offensive team. It's easy. It's hard for them to advance without getting picked off. I don't. I didn't. I huh. don't know what he said, but that's my understanding of the way this works. I um, thought the territory sort of goes back and forth all the time, and well, it does. Anyway, but the guys okay. mainly getting killed are the ones on the are ones moving forward. I mean, they're okay. more vulnerable. The okay. um, anyway, Millie is putting extreme extreme pressure on the Ukrainians 
to negotiate. Yeah, and it's interesting to what extent, I mean, it, it, is he off the reservation here or it's unclear? I mean, the reports, the official anonymous leaks from the Biden administration are, well, yes, Milley supports this, but, uh, you know, he's made the case within the administration and he hasn't won so far. But it's also possible that the administration wants him out there talking. I mean, remember, this wasn't a leak. He said this publicly. He went on MSNBC yeah. and said, I it's time to talk peace. That's a good point. I assume it's, it's that they 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 give him the tacit approval and it's a good cop, bad cop strategy. Could well be. Uh, you know, they, they want somebody pressuring Ukraine. They don't want to do it themselves. Uh, so, well, there, it's not it's not like he's a bizarre rogue figure. He's the head of the Joint Chiefs he's of some, Staff. He's the highest ranking military yeah. officer in the U.S. Um, now, now, there are reports that Jake Sullivan went to well, he did go to Ukraine, but actually did apply some of this kind of pressure. Pressure. There's uh, talk of Bill Burns of the CIA meeting, I guess, his counterpart, I think, in Turkey, supposedly, and and maybe talking uh, about peace. I I do think people should not get too optimistic in the short run. I mean, both because you, I mean, people who want peace, which isn't everybody, uh, but both because Ukraine is not, doesn't seem psychologically ready, but also Russia. I mean, you know, Putin got humiliated in, in Kherson, uh, and, you know, he's, he's taking heat from kind of the right, from the militarists, and he still has not achieved even the, I mean, I mean, he's achieved objectives he didn't profess initially, but he hasn't achieved the ones he did in terms of territory, which is fully taking Donetsk and Luhansk, it's hard for me to believe he's going to get serious about peace without at least trying to take more of Donetsk, especially where he's most lacking territory. Um, and a lot of people think you are going to see a new Russian offensive, possibly as soon as hardcore winter when all the ground is frozen. Like, I don't know if that's mid-January or whatever, but, um, and if not then, then maybe after the winter, but a lot of People expect that. Uh, as I told you last week, there were reports that although the Ukrainians profess to not worry about the Russian mobilization, when they privately, they they have concerns. The, the other big question, uh, let, let me just finish on this question of like, who who is motivated to seek peace? Two big question marks are the munitions on both sides. Uh, this guy, uh, Michael Kaufman, says they're now, he's now seeing some signs that Russia may be running low on ammunition. You know, they bought a, mil a million uh, artillery shells from North Korea a while ago. We just bought 100,000 from South Korea. And, you know, set aside, the, set aside the regular shells, there are, there's these kind of artillery shells that, that I'm starting to think haven't gotten enough attention. I mean, everybody's focused on the HIMARS, these kind of mid-range missiles, uh, that are precision guided, and Russia really has no uh, exactly corresponding weapon, and they've taken a big toll on Russia's logistics and, and and so on. But also, we have these we have some of these artillery shells that come out of regular how howitzers, but they're GPS guided. And and I finally figured out how they work. The, the on the uh, fins actually pop out of them. These are just artillery shells, but right. fins pop out, and so they can strike targets. Very precisely. I think that was a factor in the Russians finally having to abandon Kherson. I think they were taking a beating artillery wise, but but there are signs that the US does not cannot afford to hand over a lot more munitions. So this on both sides, this is part of the equation that we just don't know what what the variables are, but that would play a big role in determining which side feels it has to make peace win. There was a there was some talk that uh, this latest rounds of attacks on the Ukrainian infrastructure was depleting Russia's precision guided missiles, but I guess that just means they go in for cruder, cruder well, less precision these, missiles. <laughs> well, well, also there's the Iranian drones. I mean, I think it's true that they're using these caliber missiles, which are not cheap and not infinite, and uh, and a number of them are getting shot down. Um, but whether they do or not, you know, they, they get expended. Um, but I think the next, you know, the next best thing from their point of view is probably these drones. And I don't know how the supplies of those are holding up. I mean, I would, 
I wouldn't be surprised if we're monitoring the shipments of those and that is potentially uh, a kind of incendiary point that we or somebody tries to take out a ship carrying uh, carrying those. People are alarmed that the Iranian drones are filled with American parts, suggesting that our, our boycott is less than airtight. Um, I've long said what we need is more sanctions on Iran, Mickey. I'm just saying what people say, Bob. No. I don't take any position <laughs> at all. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It, just, it, it implies that the sanctions aren't working. Um, quickly, or there are, maybe yeah. we could sanction our manufacturers somehow, get them to you know, account for every damn part they make. I don't know. Um, well, I, what I worry about is accounting for all the weapons we're shipping to uh, to Ukraine and where those wind up. But the just quickly, the, the other thing is France is pushing China to step in and push Russia toward peace. That's a factor. Uh, and Biden had a seemingly reasonably uh, constructive encounter with Xi Jinping uh, at the G20 meeting. They spoke for three hours. Biden came out and said there doesn't have to be a Cold War. Um, and, you know, that's it's important if they do want to push China toward being constructive and pushing Russia to peace talks down the road that we not be bitter enemies with them, I think. Right. The, the other source of pressure is the Republicans in, in, in Congress, uh, it, uh, it, it, whether it's McCarthy or somebody else. The, I'm, I'm stunned when I go on Twitter, which still seems to be alive, uh, that uh, the depths of anti-Ukraine sentiment among the Republican right. I was going to try to find a tweet from Candace Owens, who's this celebrity on the right. It says, you know, we don't have a horse in this game, but at least... At least Putin is straightforward about his aims, whereas Zelensky is just a crook. I mean, why are people on the right saying Zelensky is? I mean, that seems way overboard, but that adds pressure that if the right is going to berserk anti Ukraine, that makes it tougher for Biden to get, uh, you know, money for arms shipments through Congress. So that's another source of Zelensky. He has pressure on Zelensky. He has to worry about these crazy Republicans. Yeah, presumably Biden's going to try to get something through in the lame duck session because it could it could get harder after that. Although I don't know. I mean, he wouldn't need a lot of votes in the House. Of course, you know, enthusiasm may be cooling across the board and it may be cooling uh, in Europe as well. Um, so, you know, we'll see. I did, Didn't you think Kerry Lake made a mistake in Arizona by dissing uh, McCain so Oh, that was idiotic. She did a, a bunch of, she was very high on her own fumes and uh, she made a bunch of foolish mistakes. That, that just seemed gratuitous and dumb. I mean, he, you know, you can reject this foreign policy, which is kind of what we're talking don't about. don't reject That's his voters. What's that? Don't reject his voters. Yeah, he was no, very it's successful just, there. It's just, yeah, it's just, she said, McCain Republicans, we don't want them, basically. I mean, it's like, that's just dumb. Uh I, I suppose there are a lot of McCain Republicans, but he's dead. I mean, I you know, it, it, it's, there's limited uh, diminishing returns and pissing on his grave, I think. Well, and uh, and 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 that actual downside. So you mentioned Twitter. I, I didn't quite understand the uh, last night, everybody freaking out about how I was going to die. I mean, I guess there were was, reports. More people got fired or resigned. It was insane. Than, it's, it's insane. It's these people these, were saying you know, tearful they, goodbyes. That was sort of a joke. I mean, half the people some were, were a joke, some weren't. Half the people were saying, you know, you know, this is my final tweet and making a joke yeah, of it. Or but, uh, Twitter but, was about know, the frenzy middle line. You know, they're 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 seven, they're what three thousand, seven thousand woke employees. They all think they're essential. They're not. They Musk has very effectively put them to the test. You know, if you don't buy if you don't buy into my mission. Here's three months of severance, and the woke people will take the three months of severance. Uh, it's so not just woke that gets rid people. of them. It's not just woke people. People who Come are on. hostile to what Musk is doing. Right. Did you what see you the do? headquarters of Twitter? They they ran a news feed around it, pissing on on Musk, sort of humorously, but also seriously. When was this? Uh, last night. Uh, you know, the, 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 these people hate Musk, so the people that hate Musk are 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 going to be gone. And they're not going to be maybe that many people left, but they they always like it's like when the analogy I did was you know when I, when I when 
Lewis Lapham came into Harper's and fired all the Kinsley people, we said, ha, huh, he's never going to be able to get out the magazine. Of course he got out the magazine. They always get out the magazine. And of course, Musk will be able to keep Twitter, you yeah. know, going. Uh, it's just people who are inflated with their own self-importance. Well, I mean, there could be an outage, but that presumably wouldn't yeah. be the end of it. Now, I do think uh, he's been unwise in the extent to which uh, he's flirted with, you know, creating saboteurs, in effect. I mean, I don't, I don't understand, you know, the whole security situation at Twitter. Um, but I would think that some of the things he's done increase the chances that somebody who has the capability to do real damage, at least if temporary, to the infrastructure would do it. And maybe he would just live with that. That's a good point. He, he There was something where, like, their passwords were all changed so they couldn't fuck around with the code anymore. But, uh, yeah, that, that, but that's a. Uh, but 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 I mean, like when you do this this latest thing he did, which is you know, pledge a blood oath to me or go away. How does he know that somebody won't get so pissed off that they don't say, "Well, I think I'll just stick around and fuck up his company." I mean, no, I think I think yeah, that's a very good point. I think uh, uh, I, I I'd be amazed if some people don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, uh, there are there are there's the potential for huge damages, of course. If he's you know. a weird guy, I would not say he's handled all this in the. I mean, he, in, the, I mean he, in other words, that person could be sued for millions of dollars yeah. and be in court for many, many years. Well, anyway, uh, so. all this stuff about how it's going to implode, he's going to to sell it for pennies. All of this stuff, I think, is is wrong. But what does concern me is that he he he's kind of more intent than I had imagined on making money right away, making money fast. And I, what I worry about is that the business model he ultimately settles on, which I think may be very different from, from the current business model, will end Twitter as we know it. You know, it'll be TikTok, it'll be something, but it won't be what we've had. And uh, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm not optimistic, but, I, but I'm not pessimistic in the way people were last night. That's a good point. I'm 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 pretty optimistic, but uh, but I I, I don't want to I don't want TikTok either. I mean, also there's so. the fact that he's more like Trump than I had realized. I mean, he's totally enjoying being more the center of attention than he's ever been. You know, I originally thought like, why does he need to buy Twitter? He's a Twitter star, not like he is now. I mean, he, he he's able to you know, shape America's, the consciousness of American elites in the way he never was, even if he's shaping it toward antipathy toward him. And, uh, you know, I, that just gets old. I think we're going to have to have an ignore Elon campaign on Twitter. So hashtag ignore Elon and just uh, quit giving him the positive reinforcement of all the blowback. Well, the danger is that he'll do dramatic things just to get the press as opposed to that they're needed. I, I'm up, I I want to, I want to, I want to, uh... I want to know who the cool heads are around Elon who are actually uh, going to take care of business while he, you know, I don't know, does his Trumpian contortions. I was hoping that person would be David Sachs, your friend. Well, interestingly, but, he's been on my podcast, but I'm happy to call everyone who's been on my podcast, my friend. The uh, interestingly, the the all in podcast of which he is the de facto star and, and among the co-hosts. Last week, they didn't say much about Twitter. Uh, now, it, it, it was, I'll be interested to, to he hear what they have to say this week. It was after a rough, what I thought was widely perceived as a rough week for Elon and Twitter. Well, and I don't know sign. if that's just a new policy or that's they didn't a good have any sign good news. Because that may be that he, it may be that he is formally still working there and is bound by some sort of decree some sort of agreement, non-disclosure agreement, not to talk about it. Mm -hmm. That's the way it was two weeks ago. They didn't talk about it because the people who knew about it were not allowed legally to talk about it. So they glossed over it very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, you know, so uh, the, I, I think that is a good sign until until it's proven otherwise. We'll see. Oh, this is uh, the, uh, the alarm telling us that we're at the 40-minute uh, mark. So Jesus, we gotta, really? I'm telling we, you. you, you we had, haven't even got... We have, we haven't even gotten to SBF yet. Um, well, want to say a quick thing uh, or two about no, SBF. We can, we can talk about SBF, you know where. In the, in the parrot room. 
Well, for right. people, yeah, I, I assume everybody knows what, what we mean, you know, Sam uh, Bankman Freed uh, right. and, and the collapse of one of the biggest, uh, one of the two biggest crypto exchanges, I guess. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I mean, they're interesting. I mean, things I want to explore in the pair room uh, include. Well, did you, you saw the whole the whole DM he did? He 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 says he didn't realize it was going to be publicized. Where he kind of he comes up with his alibis and 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 is uh, unwisely candid about how cynical he is and so on. No, I didn't see that. It's a wonderful thing. I'll read you some excerpts. Okay, but um, um, I'll, I'll I mean, I'll, maybe I'll. Re- well, anyway, the other thing is the effect of all the connection to effective altruism. You know, it, I want I want to explore that because you have to explain to me what effective altruism is and why why this is important. Yeah, I mean, there's concern that he's. I mean, first of all, there was a certain amount of effective altruism funding that just got pulled out from people. He was a big, big backer of effective altruism, Wait, and did that mean they just? Because I'm going to save a million children in the future, I can enrich myself and do whatever the fuck I want now. One thing that has come out of the EA movement is the idea that, look, if you're truly, if your heart is in the right place, and yes, we now have reason to wonder whether SBF's heart was in the right place. <laughs> but if your heart is in the right place, is it better to slave away at the at some NGO doing what you can? Or if you have the opportunity to just make a ton of money and give it to a bunch of NGOs, what do you do? The idea that the latter is the noble thing kind of caught on in a, EA circles. And and SBF is just totally the poster boy for this. Uh, I, to, be, I, yeah. to be rich and liberal is glorious. Yeah. Fascinating case, man. That I that is a fascinating and I've been I've been paying more attention. What do his parents think? I mean, his parents are like respectable people, right? They're Berkeley professors. They're Stan- They're both at Stanford Law School. The professors Stanford at Stanford Law School. Law okay, School. Stanford yeah. Law School. Yeah. They must be incredibly embarrassed. Maybe they're the ones who told him not to worry because the crypto market is barely regulated at all in the U.S. <laughs> but uh, I mean, that that's so, a whole issue too. Whether he's legally liable. I mean, it was it was an well, offshore the, company. And the other question is: Was he just a fraudster, or does it reflect on crypto? I will I will tell you what his story is in, okay. in detail. Okay. Uh, and that I think that is a big question. And look, I've been as prone to the Schadenfreude as anybody else. You know, you just Schadenfreude. What are you, German? What is this? Who are you to tell me? Schadenfreude to... is a good word. It's where you throw shade at the same time as you're feeling Schadenfreude. How do you how do you know? Well, I that's didn't funny. Mean you that. were stick with Schadenfreude. That. I was, was a, I was a couple of steps ahead of you there. Yeah, um, okay. You were um, you were engaged in trading for it and not trading for it. Okay, so we're heading into uh, the pair room. Is that right? Yeah. People hate people hate the recital of topics that we're going to talk about. But... Yeah, but yeah, no, I don't blame them. So we'll shut up. But but there was uh, is there something else I want to talk more about? Musk. But there's a oh. whole bunch of them. Oh, my Brett Weinstein thing. Uh, That's I got, one of them. I haven't looked at the Twitter blowback from that. I had this debate with him on his podcast. I haven't looked at the Twitter blowback since last night. Maybe I'll check in on that in between now and the pair room. But I, um, I watched the first twenty minutes. That's not enough. Really? Are you going to give well, me a bad? Are you going to give me a bad review? No, you were right, but but it that, was tedious. You were right on this little point. He had no defense. I do. I want to hear two hours of you being right and him having no defense. No, I have better things to do, like sleep. I guess it was it was in vain that I tried him to acknowledge that I was right and he was wrong. <laughs> if it took you if it took you two hours and you got nowhere, thank you. You just saved no, we me got an into, hour and we forty got minutes. Into, we got into other subjects. Okay. Well, anyway, we can talk about that. Yeah, and then um, if you want to mention a couple of other things, even though people hate it when we do that, uh, according to you. Uh, I okay. Well, there's a. Uh, this there is was a patreon.com F- slash pair. There's an Epstein the development. There was, uh, oh. I have some additions to Did you replies did, to my critics on how to talk to liberals. Did you pursue uh, the Epstein crypto connection I sent you faint hints of? No, sounds like not. No, I didn't think I got it. I'm looking for an Epstein 
uh, yeah. SBF connection. Brand unified. Yeah, well, maybe yeah. we can do that. I'll, I'll try to dig up. Uh, that, that's the holy grail of conspiracy theorists. Yeah. Um, and uh, I have uh, things to say about uh, about death. Oh, good. Uh, and uh, there is uh, uh, we can talk about our transition, our own transition, and also the issue of uh, how to get rid of Trump. Always a. Now here's a question I I, I meant to ask you before. Uh, Thanksgiving next week could be complicated for me. I think do you, is your expectation that we will have a podcast next week? Um, I could do one on Friday. Could you or also do, could you do one on Wednesday and make it the Thanksgiving edition and just put it out early? I don't think so. I have a lot of medical appointments on Wednesday. Just take like a, you know, take your smartphone. We'll do it. Do it live. Uh, Wednesday is tough, Bob. Okay. Well, we'll figure but something out. I'll, we think I'll, look we'll at be my, I'll look at my calendar, but. If if we're not here, you'll know not to not to notify local authorities. Everything's fine, but we think we may well be here. Uh, in any event, happy Thanksgiving. I would like to try to find a way to be here. Okay, um, we'll talk about that. If I'm going to give eighty percent, I should at least give eighty percent every week. Uh, that's kind of like effective. No, it's not. That's true. See, that's the inverse of tithing. Tithing is twenty percent, right? Yeah. Never um, mind. So, okay. Patreon.com slash Parrot Room is where we'll continue this conversation. And uh, anything else you want to say before I press click? Uh, uh, we, we generally tantalize people by showing them the actual right, parrot. Right. We'll see if the parrot works. This is, you know, I may have to massage its innards again. Hang on. Hello? Uh, I'm here. <laughs> it needs new batteries, I think. We'll do that, too. But... This is the final enticement for people to check into to the parrot room. We're going to change the parrot's batteries. We may do it live on TV. Okay. Um, behind a curtain. Okay. See you there.